Hello everybody, my name is Matt, I'm with Scope Education. Here we're going to be talking about ECG changes with a traumatic brain injury and how they can mimic a STEMI. So here's your patient. You have a 58-year-old male with a chief complaint of a headache for one hour. He was struck in the head with a bat, and you note that he's, he has some altered mental status, and his GCS is about 14. You do an examination of him, and you see that you notice a hematoma on the top of his head. You obtain some vitals because you're an awesome provider, and you got a heart rate of 80, blood pressure is about 220 over 145, oxygen saturation is 95% on room air, and you got a BGL, which is 85. So everything's looking pretty good so far, except his blood pressure. He doesn't have a history of high blood pressure, so you get a little nervous with that. And because you're also an awesome provider, you're going to do a 12 lead on this patient because, you know, he is altered. So why not obtain a piece of paper that will tell you what's going on with the heart? And this is what the patient's 12 lead looks like. And here you can see there's a bunch of elevation and you can see there's depression. In case you can't see that, here's some awesome lines that I was able to edit in. Thank you, technology. So you can see we have elevation and a little bit of elevation in one. Obviously, we have a wandering baseline. Obvious elevation lead two, lead three, AVF, and in V6. And you can even say a little bit in V5. We also know that we have ST depression. So we have depression in AVR, V1, V2, and V3. So is this a STEMI? Like I said, we have ST elevation in 1, 2, 3, AVF, and V6. And we have ST depression in V1, V2, V3, and AVR. Okay, so is this a STEMI? Absolutely not. That would be too simple, wouldn't it? So what if we had another patient and they come in with alter mental status and, and they fell on the floor a day before and, you know, their GCS is 14 and blood pressure is high and other than that, their BGL is fine and everything else is okay with them except that high blood pressure and some alter mental status. And we got a 12 lead of this. Well, the astute provider might notice that there is some massive T-wave inversions noted everywhere, and you are absolutely correct. These massive things here in V3, V5, V4 are called cerebral T-waves, and we're going to go into those, get into those just a little bit later and why this happens. So what can you expect to see on a 12 lead with a patient who has increased ICP? You're going to notice a prolonged QT interval. You notice that with our cerebral T-wave patient. You're gonna also, you can also see some ST elevation as seen in the first example. And you can see a bunch of T wave inversions. So why does this happen? And this is when we start doing a little bit of critical thinking. So if these two examples are caused by a traumatic brain injury or increased ICP, then why does it present this way on a 12 lead? This all comes down to catecholamines. When your brain is extremely stressed out, it may start dumping catecholamines, such as like dopamine, epinephrine, or norepi. Now, this may not seem like a big deal, but an increased amount of catecholamines can actually cause neurogenic stun myocardium. And to put this into simple terms, because I like making things simple because my IQ isn't that high, this quite literally means that a neurological issue caused some form of cardiac abnormality. As more and more catecholamines are dumped onto the heart, the more stressed out it becomes. These stressors can cause damage to the subendocardial cells. And if you know anything about the broken heart syndrome or Takotsubo cardiomyopathy, you might notice that there's some similar pathologies here. Increased amount of catecholamine release causes stress on the heart, which can can cause ST elevation or a lot of T wave inversions. Lesions or damage in the brain, especially like to the insular cortex, can lead to a massive amount of norepi, which can cause left ventricular dysfunction. So when this might explain why when you get an echocardiogram on these patients, you might notice some hypokinesia in like the septal or the ventricular areas. So why is this important? We have had time as brain drilled into our head since whatever type of schooling you went through. So when a patient comes in with a headache or a loss of consciousness and you obtain a 12 lead, maybe think before administering your antiplatelets and anti anticoagulant medications. A patient with a brain bleed isn't exactly one that you would want to start to give these medications to, right? And the longer it takes to do a CT of the patient, the more damage has been done. This all comes down to obtaining a thorough history and doing a great assessment on your patients. Most of the myocardial infarctions that you see in your patients will present, you know, your stereotypical ways, chest pain, diaphoresis, shoulder pain, neck pain, etc. And yes, I understand that majority of our patients do not read the medical literature, so the symptoms might not be spot on, especially like in our female patients. But if you have a patient who fell, who hit their head, ultra metal status, or, you know, were struck in the head with a bat or something like that, and you do a 12 lead, 
and it shows a bunch of ST elevation or something like that, start thinking about sending them to a CT scan and thinking it's more of a hemorrhagic stroke causing increased ICP. So the decision to send a patient to obtain a CT or immediately start anticoagulants or antiplatelet medications and sending them to the cath lab is, is kind of difficult. But when you do your thorough history and exam, it should help favor one of the possible diagnosis over the other. Now, now I love blackjack and playing it and learning about it and counting cards and all that kind of fun stuff. Scope Education wants to remind you that we do not support gambling, so please do not do that. And obviously, we're taking a gamble here, so I thought this analogy would work out perfectly. So you're taking a gamble on if the patient is having brain bleed or having a myocardial infarction, it's, so it's about a 50-50 chance. But what makes a really good blackjack player, or in the, our case, a provider, is gathering all the information and making an educated guess on what move to do next. The collection of all the information will help sway your decision on whether to stand or hit, which basically means obtain a CT or do an angiogram, send them to the cath lab. And that's going to be the end of our discussion today. If you have any questions, please leave in the comments. And I'll, I try to do a good job at trying to answer and read every comment. Uh, if you have any criticism, you can definitely let us know it. But remember, I have feelings too, so don't, don't make Matthew cry. If you guys also didn't know, we have our own website. It will be in the description. Feel free to check it out. We have a bunch of posts. That we post on that. Try to do it about every week. So feel free to check out some of our posts we have up. And until next time, you guys have a wonderful day.